Hey guys, welcome back to Ravenclaw Reads. So happy to be here. I am almost up to the year mark of changing this channel from an educator lens to a reader lens. And I post sporadically right now. I'm hoping to post more regularly in the upcoming months. Um, and so thanks for being here. I am a new booktube channel in a very saturated market. So if you like what you see, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share my small channel. So today I am going to do a library haul. So I am I also am gonna do a February reading plan video. And so um, you'll see some of these books twice when that video comes out. But basically, I decided for February that I was going to read mostly romance books, which I read anyway. Um, but for Valentine's Day in February, the month of love, I figured I would put a real emphasis on it. And since I know I'll get burnt out from those, I also decided that I will put in some of my fantasy books and other genres as in-between books. Um, and so that's my plan for February. But I wanted to borrow books because I'm really trying to save money on the books that I'm buying, but also like I have no space to put my books anywhere. I use the three tier cards right now and um, I could just buy a bookshelf, but I haven't. And so I'm borrowing books, doing a lot of digital reading. And so that's where I am with it in life. So I thought I would go over the books that I have today. I believe I have eight, they're here. And I borrowed these from my library. And I basically just did a random search of like Valentine's books or books for Valentine's Day and found a list. If it sounded good to me, I put it on my on my library hold list and picked it up. And they're pretty responsive at my library, so I wasn't worried about not being able to get them. Um, and no harm, no foul. If I don't like them, they're not mine to own. I don't have to store them. So let's get started. All right, so the first book I picked up is Love at First Sight. And... This book stood out to me because of the cover. Um, I really liked it. Um, and these cartoon covers stick out. So this is what it says. Falling in love is the ultimate payback. They say living well is the best revenge, but sometimes spreading the misery seems a whole lot more satisfying. That's interior designer Dan Danny Porter's justification for buying the vacant lot next to her ex-fiance's house, the house they were supposed to live in together before he cheated on her with a realtor. Danny plans to build a vacation rental that will A, mess with his view and his peace of mind, and B, prove that Danny is not someone to be stepped on. Welcome to Project Spite House. That plan quickly becomes complicated when Danny is forced to team up with Wyatt Montego, the handsome, haughty architect at her firm, and the only person available to draw blueprints. Wyatt is the kind of man who eats his sandwich with a knife and fork. But as they spend time together, Danny glimpses something deeper beneath his hard veneer. And the closer she gets to her goal, the more she wonders if winning revenge could mean losing something infinitely sweeter. So that sounds really cute. Um, this book is not too long. Uh, it's about 306 pages. Uh, that's with the epilogue. And I broke my rule this month, but generally I don't like reading romance books that are beyond like 320 pages, 360. I feel like you can wrap it up. I read By a Thread this past month, which you'll see in my January wrap up, and that's like 500 pages, and it was so good. So most of the time, romance novels should be shorter, but that's exciting. Okay, then I picked up this book. It's called Symptoms of a Heartbreak. I believe it's a YA novel. And it says, fresh from med school, 16-year-old Syra starts her first day at work, treating children and teens with cancer. She's always juggled family, friendships, and her girl genius celebrity, but now she has to prove herself to skeptical co-workers in life and death situations. Working in the same hospital as her mom isn't making things easier. Life gets even more complicated when Syra falls for a patient. To improve his chances, she'll risk her career, and it could cost her everything. So I love that. So it says, Doogie Howser MD meets the fault in our stars. I didn't read Fault in Our Stars, but I did watch Doogie Howser, so this looked cute to me. And YA always moves pretty fast, so I figured this would be an easy read. Another YA book, One True Loves, with an S, it's plural. This one says, Lenore Bennett has always been a force, a star artist and style icon at her high school. She's a master in the subtle art of not giving a, well, you know what. But now that graduation is here, she's a little less sure. She's heading to NYU in the fall with a scarlet U for undeclared written across her chest. 
Her parents always remind her that black kids don't have the luxury of figuring it out as they go. They have to be 110% prepared. But it's a lot of pressure to be her ancestors' wildest dreams when Lenore is not even sure where her dreams are yet. When her family embarks on a post-graduation Mediterranean cruise, her friend Tessa is sure Lenore's in for a whirlwind romance. But Lenore knows that doesn't happen to girls like her. Then she meets Alex Lee. After their parents bond over the Cupid Shuffle, she ends up stuck with him for the remainder of the cruise. He's a hopeless romantic and a golden boy with a 10-year plan. In short, he's irritating as hell. But as they get to know each other during the picturesque stops across Europe, Alex may be able to help Lenore find something else she's been looking for, even if she doesn't want to admit it to herself. Love. Oh my gosh. That sounds so cute. I literally picked this up because of the cover. It's kind of glaring, but I just, the cover stood out to me. And now I'm obsessed. Like this might be the first one. It might be. I don't know. Love that one. Next up, The Kissing Game. I googled this one and it looked like it was good. It came up as one of the best novels for Valentine's Day. So here we go. Rena, Rena Jackson is ready. She's worked her tail off to open up her own hair salon and she's almost ready to quit her job at the dive bar. Rena's also a diehard romantic and she's had her eye on bar regular Axel Heller for a while. He's got that tall, brooding, and handsome thing going on big time. Problem is, he's got that buttoned up Germanic Iceman thing going as well. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, Rena's about ready to give up on Axel and find her own Mr. Right. At six foot six, Axel knows he intimidates most people. He's been crushing on the gorgeous waitress for months, but the muscle mechanic is no romantic, and his heart is buried so deep he has no idea how to show Rena what he feels. He knows he's way out of his depth and she's slipping away, so he makes one crazy, desperate play. I'm excited about this. It's kind of giving um, the bromance series a little bit, in my opinion, so that'll be good. Okay, four more left. The next one is The Worst Best Man. I picked this up on Kindle and the hard copy, both borrowed from the library. Um, I haven't done that before, but I think I'll like being able to switch back and forth, like when I'm reading at night versus the day, if I'm going somewhere. Um, so, and I've seen this one out for a while that I've wanted to read, um, but I haven't yet, so I'm excited. This one says, a wedding planner left at the altar? Yeah, the irony isn't lost on Carolina Santos either. But despite that embarrassing blip from her past, Lena's offered an opportunity that could change her life. There's just one hitch. She has to collaborate with the best, make it the worst man from her failed nuptials. Marketing expert Max Hartley is determined to make his mark with a coveted hotel client looking to expand its brand. But then he learns he'll be working with his brother's whip smart, stunningly, absolutely off limits ex fiance, and she loathes him. If they can nail their presentation without killing each other, they'll both come out ahead. Except Max has been public enemy number one ever since he encouraged his brother to jilt to the bride, and Lena's ready to dish out a little payback of her own. Soon Lena and Max discover animosity may not be the only emotion creating sparks between them. Still, this star crossed couple can never be more than temporary playmates because Lena isn't interested in falling in love and Max refuses to play runner up to his brother ever again. Ooh, that one's juicy. That one's gonna be good. Oh man, see, I, I just picked these randomly and I, maybe I should have done more in depth research, but I didn't. And now I'm so excited because they all sound so good. Okay, next is Love and Other Disasters. This cover is amazing. Uh, and I've seen this around. This one says, Dahlia Woodson's culinary dreams are coming true. Sure, her marriage ended in a hideous explosion of misery and she's quit her job for the gamble of a lifetime, but she's finally a contestant on the cooking show, Chef Special. Now all Dahlia has to do is not fall on her face more than once, make the best food of her life, and try not to get distracted by her hot, incredibly dishy competition. London Parker is fighting for more than just a cooking title. Not only do they just come out as non-binary on national television, but this is an opportunity for London to raise some support and a ton of cash for the queer community. No pressure. Getting distracted by a tiny and adorable tornado like Dahlia could be disastrous. So somewhere among the flying fish tacos, rampant egos, and culinary chaos is something that looks a lot like deliciously spicy chemistry. But can London and Dahlia's growing relationship take the heat, or are they about to get burned? Really nice. I like that. And I love the diverse um perspective so i'm excited about that okay i have two more next this one is a perfect equation this looks like historical romance and i haven't read a historical romance in a while but here we go six years ago the tcf finley made a mistake in society's eyes and she's lived with the consequences ever since when the prickly mathematician agrees to take over temporary management of athena's retreat a secret haven for england's women's secret 
a secret haven for England's women scientists, she is weary of relying on the other club members and certainly doesn't need any help from the insufferably attractive Viscount Greycliffe. Lord Williams Hughes, Viscount Greycliffe, cannot afford a single misstep. Not when the directorship of England's most powerful clandestine agency is within his grasp. Tasked with helping Letty safeguard Athena's retreat, Gray is positive that he can control the antics of the various scientists as well as manage the tiny mathematician despite their historic animosity and simmering tension. Okay. Um, this might be last on the list. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But it doesn't sound very interesting. But you never know. You can't judge a book by a cover. However, the back didn't sound amazing. But we'll see. We'll see. I have it. That might be last on the list. Not as exciting as the other ones, but there we are. Okay, and here's the last one that I picked up. Love Your Life. It says, call Ava romantic, but she thinks love should be found in the real world, not on apps that filter men by height, job, or astrological sign. She believes in feelings, not algorithms. So after a recent breakup and dating app debacle, debacle she decides to put love on hold and escapes to a remote writer's retreat in coastal Italy. She's determined to finish writing the novel she's been fantasizing about, even though it means leaving her close-knit group of friends and her precious dog, Harold, behind. At the retreat, she's not allowed to use her real name or reveal any personal information. When the neighboring martial arts retreat is canceled and a few of its attendees join their small writing community, Ava, now going by Aria, meets Dutch, a man who seems too good to be true. The two embark on a baggage-free whirlwind love affair, cliff jumping into gym color Mediterranean waters and exploring the splendor of the Italian coast. Things seem to be perfect for Aria and Dutch. But then their real identities, Ava and Matt, must return to London. As their fantasy starts to fade, they discover just how different their personal worlds are, from food choices to annoying habits to sauna etiquette. Are they compatible with anything? And then there's the prickly situation with Matt's ex-girlfriend, who isn't too eager to let him go. As one mishap follows another, it seems, while they love each other, they just can't love each other's lives. Can they reconcile their differences to find one life together? So there's that one. This one sounds just okay to me as well, but I feel like I overall picked some really great picks. Um, my next video will be like my February plans. Uh, I don't want to say TBR, but I have a stack of books that I would like to get through. Um, and there will be slip between these as well as some other choices of different genres. And so really excited to show and film that for you guys. But comment down below if any of these books sounded interesting to you. What do you think I should read first? What would you read? Um, and again, please like, comment, subscribe, and share my channel as we continue to grow this small booktube channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.